Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel, on this beautiful day. How are you guys and girls doing? Hope you're doing great as always. Uh, please check out the description box. Nice links, beautiful people, uh, all that stuff. <laughs> There's no beautiful people in the description box, by the way. Only nice, beautiful links. Uh, anyway, drop a like, subscribe, all that stuff. So here you go. Let's keep going, uh, working on this beautiful game. So what I'm going to do is actually... What a problem we're having is that the animations don't reset. So let me just demonstrate this for you. I'm just gonna. I'm, I was running some tests, you know. That's why it might look a little a little weird here. Um, doing my testing, but what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you. So this doesn't count. Uh, if I run, just look at the animation after I run and we go back to idle. The idle animation isn't reset. It keeps going from where it was before the running animation. And the same thing with the running animation. See, it's not resetting after the idle. Now, I don't want it to reset while you're still running. I want this to be so it doesn't look like it's kind of just inching forward. And you can get a continuous animation if you spam the key. But at least if I change the animation, I want it to be reset. So one way you do that is using pointers. Now, remember, pointers... Uh, check out addresses, okay? Different addresses or addresses or whatever you want to call it. And the thing is, if we can check anytime we hit play, uh, because we don't want to reset all animations every every frame while we're playing, because you might have a lot of animations, and if you reset them every frame, you get a you know a bunch of overhead that you don't want. So you'll have a bunch of extra computations, uh, calculations happening. We don't want that. So if you use a, a uh, animation pointer last animation this will keep track of the last active animation and these hold addresses so we can check it for a another animation pointer to see if it's the same to see if it's basically the same animation okay um so yeah there you go now to do that let's see to do that we just have the pointer and we're going to actually set it to zero. Can you close all to the left? Now we'll just close all that and then open dot uh, H. Okay, so we're going to initialize that. So last animation is going to start at null. Okay, because we haven't done anything yet. And the important part, the very important part here is to make sure that... Uh, uh, every time we play, we just reset all the other animations once. Okay. Uh, so that happens every time we play a new animation. So to do that, I think we just do this. If last animation is not equal, this animations at key. So the, the animation we're trying to play, if it's not the same as the last animation played, that means we switched animations. There's another animation playing now. That means we can reset all the other animations except the one playing. So to do that, I'm just going to copy this. Um, or we could just do this. Last animation uh, reset. Uh, just reset the last one played. Okay, because there will always be one beforehand, and we'll set um, this last animation to this animation's key. So we don't have to reset every one, we'll just reset the last one, and then do that. But one thing we need to do, and this last animation is not equals null, because if it's null, we don't want to reset it. Um, Uh, da, 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 da. So we will actually, let's see. Uh, you know what we'll do? We'll make a little check for that in here. If this last animation equals null, uh, then we will set this last animation to the key. Uh, else, we'll do this. This will only happen once because it will only be null once but this is a nice check so we're checking was the last animation this new animation that i want to play yes it uh, or no it isn't okay then we switched animations is it null okay then i'll just set it to 
this animation, the current one. Otherwise, I'll reset the last one and then I'll set it to this animation as a key. And the, the reason I can just do this uh, um, assignment here is because animations at position key is a animation pointer, if you remember that. So it is a animation pointer, just like I said. So there you go. Now we have a little check going. Now, I hope you can notice this, but I'm just going to run it and I'm going to show you how this works. Um, and one more thing we're going to do today is we're going to actually set up the editor state because we really need the editor state to be able to play the game, to be able to add tiles and stuff. So let me just show you. If I run, you'll see that the animation restarts every time that I... And so does the run animation. Just look at the foot here. Let me put him at the center. Look at the foot. But if I keep running and don't switch to idle, he doesn't reset this animation. So it doesn't look like he's jittering forward. But if I switch it, resets back. And you do want that. You want to reset your animations uh, each time you, you do that. Okay? Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. Now, we'll have different sprites, obviously, than this. Just like I said before a hundred times. We won't be using this sprite because this is a side-scroller sprite. And we're going to be making a top-down game. Now, I don't have a lot of nice sprites and I'm no artist. So it's going to be really tough. For me to find a good one i do have lots of resources that i bought but none of those look really nice i look i like side scrollers man i wish we could make a side scroller rpg metroidvania style uh right here going ham but you know i'll do that in another series i guess because this is already i guess set to be a top down um i guess you know what we'll just do it but i'll i'll, I'll get back to you guys with nice different uh resources and sprites as soon as I find them. So that's why I just want to start off by making a new class here called the editor state virtual virtual destructor and I have state as a as a base. Uh, and you know what we gotta do. You know what we have to do. If and def editor state dot h or underscore h define this thing here uh, and if all that crap uh, and then we did include state so we're good now we're gonna have to obviously uh, copy over some stuff just put it in here in the state editor state editor state there we go game state let's copy over from main menu state there isn't too much stuff so um, it makes it a little easier for us. Uh, let's see, private and public. And then we'll just remove everything we don't need. Editor state public, uh, like this. And I'm going to remove that. We will need button, though. Main menu state. I'll include button in uh, state I guess where is state well you know what let's just include it everywhere right now everywhere we need it button right there and we'll have a map of buttons that we will background texture nah background nah font probably gonna need that um, okay Editor state. All right, we got the window, the supported keys, and the states. Good shit, good shit. Update input, update buttons, update render buttons, render. Okay, so we got a few functions we do like. Now, since it's very similar to main menu.cpp, uh, I'm just going to also, I am actually, no, you know what? I'm just going to copy all of this. All of these and put them in editor state.cpp. Okay, and I'm just gonna change all of these to editor state. All of these. Uh, I think I do have the constructor as well and the destructor. Yes, I do. Okay, there you go. So, you know what, guys? Just remove all this, copy one of these, editor state right there, remove that, and just paste it into all of these. 
Okay. And I promise you it will work just fine. In menu state. Um, okay. And we don't need deaths. We don't need any of this. Quit the game, new game. Update mouse position, all the buttons. Uh, probably not going to need that right now. Wait, I need to do need to update those. All the buttons, if I do have any. Mouse position, update buttons. Render buttons. Okay, editor state. Editor state render. I don't need the background. See, so we can pretty much just copy everything. I'm just going to show you everything. Um, that deletes all the buttons. Okay, we need to remove all of these buttons. We need to get editor state keybinds. Keybinds, all that stuff. Editor state for the error code font we'll just load that font we don't need the background texture uh, we don't need the background size either so there you go now we have a pretty much we have a a new state which we can come into okay um, so there you go that's about it now let me just look at game state how I do the in it in it the keybinds thing or update right there update input so I'm going to just copy this where I press escape to end the state. And I'm going to go in here. And I'm going to go into update input. And I'm going to paste this in here. So if the close keybind is pressed, then we'll end the state. Now, before I leave you guys and girls, uh, just go into your, your folder, wherever you have it. As familiar RPG for me here, config. And just copy paste the game state keybinds and make sure you name it editor state keybinds. Okay, and then we're just going to edit with sublime text or whatever you have. Remove everything else. Just keep the escape for close. And this is my bot code. I don't want to show that. Editor. Okay, so there you go. Now I can actually, now we actually have an editor state. Now we can play around with it. We can add stuff to it. We can add buttons. We can add different types of things. And I'll, I'll make sure I'll make some kind of a dialog box thing because we're not using IMGUI right now. That's just to kind of program stuff ourselves. Okay. The whole point of this series is to code everything yourself. We are going to use IMGUI later. I promise I'll show you how it works. But for now, we'll just do the most of the stuff ourselves. So you get a hum of how to do these things on your own. Um, so there you go. Now I just want to push that. If you go to main menu state.cpp or h first, okay, and you include editor state.h here, and we go down to main menu state, we go down to where we push the right here, we push game state. Uh, so how was it? It was what order was it? It was game state settings, editor state, exit state. Okay, settings doesn't do anything. Settings. This is uh, editor. Uh, editor state. Editor state. And I'm going to push a new editor state right here. With all the keys and everything. And we're just going to run this before we end. And we'll see that it works. And it should work just fine. Or it will crash. And I look like a fool. Please don't crash. Okay, there you go. So let's just first try a new game. Still works. Uh, settings doesn't work. Editor works. We're in the editor state. Exit. So I can get in, go in and out of the editor state as much as I want. New game still works. Okay, it does jitter a little bit. I don't know what the hell happened there, but that's okay. It doesn't really matter. Editor, new game. All right, cool, cool, cool. You know what? Cool, perfect. So we're pretty much done with that. Now we can put stuff in there. Like I said, create a map, do all kinds of stuff. And that feels that feels great. That feels really nice. 
one thing I'm going to do before I leave you is just look at what entity has to offer again, just so I remember. Animation component entity.cpp. Oh, yeah, before I leave you, please set this uh, animation component to null up here, just so it's initialized to null. Uh, otherwise, deleting it, if you don't, uh, will cause an error. So you need to set it to null. Please just remember that. I hope you watch to the end of the video to see this very important um and there you go guys and girls thank you so much for watching thanks for sticking with me thanks for all the support i uh, hope it's going well programming coding this game and just take care and also check out the description box like i said and again thanks for all the support take care and i'll see you guys and girls in the next one all right bye bye